So the right bundle is blocked and if you see here in the uh, conduction of impulse, the left side impulse will be intact. So coming to right bundle branch plot, so obviously if you see in a right bundle branch plot, what will happen here, if I go to this uh, picture here, so the right bundle is blocked and if you see here in the uh, conduction of impulse, the left side impulse will be intact. So you will have uh, the initial activation of the mid septum, so there will be R wave in V1, right? Thereafter, there will be depolarization of all the LV. So, since the right bundle branch is blocked, the conduction direction will be from left to right. So, the terminal deflection will be towards the right side. So, what will happen is that initially you will have mid septal uh, depolarization. So, you will have a initial R wave in V1 and an initial Q wave in V5, V6. Thereafter, there will be uh, depolarization uh, throughout the LV. So obviously, you will have an S wave in V1 and R wave in V5, V6. And since after the LV depolarization is complete, now the wave front will be shifting towards the right side. And what you will then have, that the terminal deflection will be towards the right side. That's why there will be uh, another R wave in lead V1 and a slurred S wave in, so this is the S wave in V5, V6. So it bit, makes very simple to understand that why you have an R, S, R pattern in V1 and a Q, R in V5, V6 in the right bundle branch plots because first of all the septal depolarization will be normal so initial R wave will be there in V1. Thereafter since the LV is still the predominant myotardium, myotardial mass the vector will be shifted towards epitally laterally so S wave in uh, V1 and prominent R wave. And since the terminal deflection or terminal wave front will be directed towards the right bundle because the right side RV also needs to be depolarized. So it will depolarize from left to right. So that's why you have another R wave in V1 with a slurred S wave in V6. So this is how the right bundle branch looks like. So on the ECG, what you have? And since the depolarization in a bundle, right bundle branch plot or left bundle branch plot, it will not be through the normal route through the fascicles and through the Putinje fibers, it will be muscle to muscle conduction. So when all of the left LV is depolarized and the septum is depolarized, now the wavefront will shift towards the RV and until it encroaches the Putinje fibers, it will be a muscle to muscle conduction and it will be delayed. So first thing to note is that uh, we call it a complete right bundle branch plot when there is a QRS duration is more than or equal to 120 milliseconds. That is the entire depolarization wave is delayed because the conduction time has increased. So you will have an RSR pattern that is a small R as deep S and a small R uh, gain but uh, or you can have a RSR pattern so you can have a this is a RSR dash pattern or you can have an R S so the capital later indicates that the amplitude is more the voltage is more so large R means large amplitude so you can have a RSR pattern uh, with a small s as well as like this. So this is the feature of uh, uh, right bundle branch plot in V1, V2. 
and correspondingly in v5 v6 lead 1 and v6 you will have a slurred s wave which is a wide s wave and since the early entrance required in v5 v6 but delayed in v1 so obviously this terminal deflection will be delayed v1 the right side which was the right myocardium rv myocardium is delayed in uh, depolarizing so you will have a v5 v6 which is delayed and one thing is important to remember that a typical right bundle branch blot has a small initial r compared to the r dash or the second r so the we call it the it looks like ears of the rabbit so the first r is always smaller than the second ear in typical right bundle branch blot and this is an important feature morphological identification of whether an pulse is arising from the ventricle or the is supraventricular normally in bundle branch blot right bundle branch blot you don't have a axis deviation if there is no other pathology so if there is an additional left anterior fascicle blot you can have a left axis deviation if there is an additional left posterior fascicle blot you can have a right axis deviation and we call it a incomplete right bundle branch blot when the TRS duration is less than 120 milliseconds so you have an RSR pattern the TRS duration is above 100 to 120 it is an incomplete right bundle branch blot sometimes you can have an RSR pattern but the QRS duration is less than 100 milliseconds and we call it a physiological uh, positional variant. So it's not a right bundle branch blot. So for a right bundle branch blot, it's important that the QRS duration is more than 100 milliseconds. 100 to 120, it is incomplete uh, with an RSR pattern as described. And uh, if it is more than 120, it is a complete right bundle branch blot. So see for an example here, you have an RSR pattern and you can say that it is a small r, small s and a large r here. And you can see the slurring here in the s wave. And you know how, why it happened here. And uh, the axis is normal, but the QRS duration is less than 120 milliseconds. So we call it an incomplete right bundle branch blot. But now here, if you see, you have a small r, a deep s, and a small second R, but it is the first R is smaller than the second R. Slurred S wave, QRS duration is more. So, and you have here uh, evidence of uh, what you can a uh, left posterior hemi blot RS in EVL and QR in lead C. So, it is can be a left posterior hemi blot. We have to rule out whether it's RVH or not, but uh, it looks like it's it's more of a left posterior hemi blot and interestingly the p waves are i mean if you see the p waves here it's positive in avr so obviously it's like a ectopic atrial rhythm so there may be some rvh also but still you have to rule out rvh before making a diagnosis of a bifascicular blot so if it's a left posterior hemi blot additionally what we know is that this is a right bundle branch with right axis deviation and there is an indication that there could be a left posterior hemi blot. Where if RVH is ruled out, we'll call it a bifascicular blot. So now you see here, you have an RSR pattern kind of here, and it's it's a uh, normal variant. But okay, so it's not a right bundle branch blot here. Yeah.